Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, October 7th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I believe it was just yesterday that I talked about a UEFI rootkit that has been found in the wild. Well, and today we do have a similar uh, story to start out with about sort of these embedded hardware slash firmware problems, this time affecting Apple's T2 security chip. Now, first of all, what this T2 chip is trying to do is fundamentally difficult. It's trying to protect a system from an attacker that has physical access to the system. And of course, in the past, this has often failed. And apparently, the T2 chip doesn't get it quite right either. Now, uh, this particular chip is not something that is sort of standing on its own. It was developed just as security chip. It's actually based on Apple's A10 CPU that has been found in older iPhones. And with that, well, we have a fully capable CPU. We also get pretty much a full operating system called Bridge OS, which apparently is loosely based on Watch OS. So you have a CPU and you have a more or less fully functional operating system. And essentially what this does is it carries over the security concept that was originally developed for the iPhone. The iPhone in its A10 chip has a secure enclave processor that essentially stores things like secrets. And yes, this same SEP, the same secure enclave processor, also exists within the T2 chip. And now it also has an operating system, but this operating system system exists in ROM and that's a security feature in that it cannot physically be patched or updated. But of course, by being based on the A10 processor and the SAP coming with that processor, this T2 chip appears to be vulnerable to some of the same problems. In particular, the checkmate exploit that of course has been taken advantage of now for a while to jailbreak iPhones. It is possible to take advantage of this vulnerability using the T2 chip because the debugging interface was actually left enabled. Now, in order to do take advantage of this, you need to connect a specific USB-C cable that will essentially automatically exploit this vulnerability and then could also be used to exploit the macOS device on boot. So to put this into perspective, bad news, this cannot be patched. It's a problem in the ROM of uh, the T2 chip and uh, Apple essentially has to come up with a new chip, but uh, for existing devices, there is no patch. The good news in order to exploit this vulnerability, the attacker has to be able to connect a specific USB-C cable that actually does have the JTAG capability while the user is logging in to the system. So this is not something that could be done as a pure evil mate attack where someone is connecting a cable, booting the system, but not knowing the password. So in my opinion, a credible attack scenario would, for example, uh, be an, a user connecting a laptop to a charger at a conference facility or maybe connecting to like a projector or something like this via USB-C and then booting their laptop. And at that point, the cable uh, could install malware on the system that would, for example, lock keystrokes or do other things uh, to the system after the user logs in. There's no official statement from Apple yet about this vulnerability, which is somewhat typical, I must say, for Apple. Niels Hoffmans, who discovered this vulnerability and also has uh, provided a proof of concept exploit code, has contacted Apple well, uh, back in August, uh, I believe. 
This bug could also be used to disable uh, the activation lock anti-theft feature and well setting a firmware password is probably not going to help either uh, because the T2 chip is needed to actually make the keyboard work but you need to enter uh, the firmware password so firmware password that only kicks in way after all of this exploit happens. Well, sorry for spending so much time on uh, this vulnerability. We have a couple simpler, more straightforward vulnerabilities as well. NVIDIA released a new graphics drivers. Uh, please don't forget to update those. Uh, it's easy to forget uh, those graphic drivers, not just NVIDIA. They're often not included in your operating system updates. And typically these vulnerabilities lead to approach escalation, but they can also in some cases be abused for code execution. And Cloudflare added a neat new feature to all of its plans, including the free plans uh, that alerts you of a denial of service attacks uh, that Cloudflare detects against your site. You'll receive a quick email with a brief description about the type and size of the attack and also what is being targeted. Kind of interesting because one thing we noticed a while ago, a few months ago, we published a little bit about some of the DNS amplification attacks we're seeing these days. And a lot of the targets were smaller sites. For So for them, something like Cloudflare is probably the simplest and cheapest since it's kind of free a way to protect yourself from these type of attacks. And we got an interesting privacy issue with the Gravatar service. It was discovered by Carlo Di Dato. Now, uh, this particular issue, not really all that severe, but still it does sort of underpin what Gravatar is kind of uh, trying to do here in providing basically an avatar image that you can display in different discussion forums. We also use them here at the Internet Storm Center. But uh, if I'm trying, like if you're logging into the Internet Storm Center and what I'm going to do is I'm going to check with Gravatar, hey, you know, do you have a profile with them using a hash of your email address? Now, the other way you can look up a particular user is by their username. But at least using the official API, there is no no simple way to enumerate all Gravatar users. What uh, Carlo found is that they have an undocumented uh, API where you basically just use a serial user ID. And yes, uh, that can now easily be enumerated and you can download essentially all the usernames for all of uh, the Gravatar users. And with that also the profile that they may have set up for their account. Overall, the information is public. That's kind of what Gravatar is all about. If you're not using Gravatar, well, uh, nothing for you uh, to worry about. And really the only thing that people will know is that you are a Gravatar user. If they're interested in you, they could have done that by just looking up your email address. So cute little uh, problem here, but nothing terribly severe. And well, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.